show you some of the results of the last firing that you did see me uh, pack and I would love to say that it was a fantastic firing but in fact it was not a good firing it was a bad firing <laughs> so I was uh, as you do I was like scratching my head as to what I had done wrong and how the firing had in fact gone wrong and um, let me just show you, there, there are some other pots that I don't have here, but let me just show you some of these ones that I do have. And, you know, these are some of the better ones that have come out actually quite handsomely, quite nice. Nice, um, nice ash, wood ash here, working quite well. So, a little bloating there, a little bloat. Mainly the problem that I had with the firing was bloating and oxidisation. Um, these are some of the ones that were more presentable. Some of them were not very presentable. Now here you have a, here's an example of uh, an iron slip scraffito with the white glaze put over the top that is slightly oxidized. It's not altogether unpleasant. Actually, I've got some other tea bowls here, which also similar, uh, this rather gray slate blue, which actually, it can be attractive, it just depends. Can be a little bit, uh, a little plain maybe. Uh, I'll just show you these guys. Uh, you see, what we should be looking for in a good pot is life, liveliness, something going on, um, or say quiet subtleness as well is, is nice. Um, okay, just see those, remember that. Now I'm going to show you exactly the same thing. Glaze again. This one, for example. Now, that is more reduced, not so oxidized. But you see how the iron is coming through, breaking through, which that is what I'm, that's what I'm really after, that sort of effect. Now, I don't mind if it goes a little bit more irony and a little, or a little bit more bluey, you see. But uh, I don't like it too, too sort of uh, plain. I like something going on. Yes. Now I'm going to show you some examples of of the that same glaze. Okay, bear in mind. Okay, this is the same glaze. All right, but this is this is rather oxidized. You see how black it comes out. It comes out rather rather black, doesn't it? Almost like a temaku. But it that's that, that's that's the result of oxidization. Oxidization, um, which I don't like. We don't like the oxidized. We don't like the oxidized look. Um, this little bit of bloating there on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see it, but inside, right at the very bottom, you probably won't be able to see it, but the glaze hasn't, it's like, it hasn't properly f sort of melted and like smoothed over like glass. You know, it's still got sort of like pock marks in it, which which indicates that the, that the firing perhaps went a little bit too fast, you see. The glaze didn't have enough time to, to become glassy, glassy smooth. 
Now here's one which where it has gone glassy smooth, which is it's it's, it's actually down in the bottom there where you can't see, but it is it is. This one is also a little bit more reduced. It's a learning curve, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, now I'm going to show you some real, I've shown you some goodish ones. I'm now going to show you some bad ones. You see, you see this is, you see how this is oxidized and rather um, the glaze has crazed a lot on the inside here. Are we in the picture? Ooh. I don't know if you can see that. There's some crazing going on in there. You see, and see these little bloats here. Those little, those little bloats, those little lumpy bits. Now here's here's one with some bloats. You see, see that bloat? Oh look, look at that there. You see that? See those bloats? And uh, and again on the inside, up here on the on 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 the lip there. That's bloated. There's there's one with a bloat down the bottom. And oxidized. Damn nuisance. I tell you, I was really annoyed. Because, because, you see, the reason, as from what I understand, why bloats occur can, can occur for different reasons. One is that the, some of the organic matter in the clay hasn't been properly burnt out in the bisque firing. And and in order to make sure that you do burn it all out, you need to go slow enough, you see, uh, in a critical phase where, you're, where the organic matter is combining with the oxygen in the kiln. You've got to make sure the kiln is not in any way reducing, but is in an oxidizing atmosphere. And then the, the, the organic matter combines with the oxygen and can leave the kiln, you see. So I took great care with these that I made sure that in the bisque firing that we, that I thought I had done that satisfactorily. So of course I was rather, rather peeved, you know, when I came to discover that. But you know what? I, in the last in the last stages of this firing, I when I went out, I left the kiln for a bit and then I came back out. And when I came out, I noticed. It wasn't reducing properly, you know. It wasn't reducing as it as I left it, and so I realised that something had happened in the kiln, uh, which had caused it to go into more of an oxidising mode, and um, and as a result, as a result of going more into oxidisation, the temperature rocketed up rather fast. And that's another, another cause of bloating can be over-firing, going too fast. And I think that, that was actually the real cause of this. All of these ones that are really badly bloated, and others that are out there in the, in the kiln shed, are, are all on the bottom shelf where the, the kiln was rather hot, and where it um, was oxidised, and... That's where it got overfired. The shelves above that were 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 better and were okay. Really, uh, they weren't the best. But uh, the kiln was in general oxidised and bloated. And I also discovered that where my chimney flue is, a uh, a crack had opened up along the side. So what happened was those gases in the kiln that should have been circulating, being a downdraft kiln, were taking a shortcut, you see, were taking a shortcut and going in that crack and out the chimney. So the bottom part of the kiln wasn't getting the, the reduction that it needed. Again, contributing to the overfiring. So... <laughs> anyway... I just thought I'd bring you up to speed on that. Uh, it's, it's very important, you know, to when you've got something in your kiln that's going wrong, to really have a real close think as to what you did, what was going on uh, through the, the course of the firing, 
and to take note, mental note anyway, of things like seeing, you know, the reduction flame on the top of the chimney, what's going on there. And, and if you've got a pyrometer, which I don't have, readings on the pyrometer. I'm going to order a pyrometer and um, get to the bottom of it, I say what? <laughs> yeah. It all, you know, and another thing you see, the reason though that this may have happened is because I've rebuilt my kiln since I moved it here. I rebuilt it and uh, I added another row of bricks. You know what, it's an old scut kiln and I, uh, and I, um, it's got three rings, you know, and then I put an extra row of bricks in there, making the kiln deeper. And, um, And I think I uh, got a bit out of touch, you know, with firing the kiln um, and its idiosyncrasies. I think I got a little bit of out of touch with it. That's a little vinegar bottle. It's quite nice with the with a celadon glaze. You see, now this this actually I'm not sure if this was in that firing or in the firing in the firing before, but. Um, Salad and glaze with a stopper. I don't find, I don't know why, but over here in the US, I don't, I don't find that the salad and glaze seems to be as popular as it was over in the UK. And um, I don't know, maybe that's a, a cultural thing. Probably is. Anyway. Oh, here's a little. This guy was a demonstration pot I did actually on a workshop. But it, uh, I was demonstrating using the um, the rounded the paddle with uh, that. You see to give to give this give this effect, which you can do. And um, a bit of wood ash there running down, quite nice. Little lidded caddy. Um, okay, folks. Well, oh yeah, here's a here's a pestle and mortar. It came out okay, and some of the, these came out with bloats as well. Always, always good to have a good supply of GP bowls, of course. The nice thing about GP bowls is, you see, they, they, they stack, don't they? They stack together, so they don't take up too much room in the cupboard. Hey, Sheena. Yeah. Come on, then. Here. Okay, folks, well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. And um, this Saturday, I'm actually going to be down at the, at, the, at the Weaver's store. I'm going to be demonstrating. I'm taking my leech turtle wheel down there, taking some pots along to sell, and I should be making pots there in the store. So if you're in the Milheim area, uh, head to the Weaver's store. And um, it's... Uh, it's a store, a hardware store really. But uh, yeah, anyway, you, you know about the Weaver store, you've seen the, uh, the mugs, didn't you? Or did you? And I don't think you saw them finished. Let me get one or two to show you quickly. Yeah, 
these actually were also all in this kiln. But, fortunately, they were not on the bottom of the kiln. They were... Uh, some of these had um, some of these had the the scroll the scroll on the bottom and the the thumb rest on the top. But uh, see if I can show you one as we did. You see the seal there with the the emblem. Weaver's store. Yeah, I did some that had the names of the the directors written underneath, but uh, oh, they came they, uh, they they came out reasonably well. Yeah, fortunately these these guys weren't weren't on the bottom. Um, This, uh, this kind of, uh, where I put a soft pad of clay and then I stamp into it. Uh, it, it works sometimes, sometimes it works better to, to stamp it on the table and then take, carefully, take the, the seal that you've stamped and very carefully, you know, push it onto the, the body of the, of the pot. But you've got to be very careful that you don't, smudge the the lettering you know that's the that's the problem with that anyway please go to my website simonleachpottery.com and we're going to be putting some of these tankards up there uh, the good the bad and the ugly probably not the ugly but you know the ones that are ones that are sale worthy as it were uh, so I'm going to photograph these and, and get them up there. Hey, thanks for joining us, folks, and let's all keep on practicing, eh? <laughs> thanks. Bye-bye now.